Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cyclocross Social Podcast. It's Christmas Eve, we are going to be talking about the World Cup in Antwerp a day later than planned. I traveled back from Antwerp to my house and it was just very late by the time I came back too tired. Isam wasn't feeling too fit at that hour either, so that's why we're recording today. Another demonstration by Van der Poel to talk about, also one by Van van Empel. Are we in for an invincible season by her 11 out of 11 so far? With me here to discuss all of that is Issa. Yes, thank you for having me. Let's dive straight into the action as much as Van der Poel dived onto the beach today. Same speed, let's get into it. The start of the race was fairly entertaining on the men's side. Mathieu van der Poel missed his pedal and was in 28th. For once the start was not decisive for the race. Pitcock went down in the first corner and fell back as well. Those two were chasing but Van der Poel didn't need much time to move to the front of the race. By the end of the second lap, he had overtaken everyone on a course that wasn't exactly made for overtaking. He didn't wait all too long to power away, but he managed to break away from Eli Isabit, who was at that point leading a big pack at the front of the race. Van der Poel built a big gap and, as we're used to by now, kind of slowed down in the final part of the race and took the win. The battle for a second was entertaining for a while. Eli Isbiet was there with Michael van Toeren out. Wout van Aert was there as well. Van Aert looked to be struggling to get rid of Isbiet, but in the final stages of the race managed to drop Isbiet and take second place. Isbiet, however, the World Cup leader, can be satisfied with a third spot on the podium. Isam, I really don't know what to say about Van der Poel. We've applauded him in Mol, we've applauded him in Herentals, and I can only do the same here. You know that gif or that video of lebron james in the nba where he's saying come on man that's too easy that's literally van der poel he's 28th after the start in normal circumstances you would say well that's going to be difficult to still win the race he just hits the front after two laps and still decides the race after 15 minutes like it's so impressive yeah totally i mean it was um he made the race not so dull as it could have been uh, with um he's, he's, he's missed the battle stroke and then from there you know, he was a bit hampered with the crash of Pitcock. How he goes through the field, you kind of already gets the feeling after lap one, okay, he will be at the front in no time. And when he was at the front, uh, he took his time a little, but, you know, Isabit then makes makes a small mistake. He, he gets past and then he was like, okay, let's try and uh, put the others under pressure. And that was the last time that they saw him in a way, I guess, that it was very impressive. And it was a strong... And it's the same story as we have seen already from him in the in in his first two races of the season. This is his third race, and um, it's 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 almost like it's getting only better and better. And yeah, I think that it was um, a very strong outing from the world champion. And yeah, there is not much what the others can do. They can look they can look at the situation uh, and then very quickly focus. And uh, right for second place. And I think that was exactly what we were watching. We saw one guy that was just above the rest and the others that uh, very quickly realized that it was going to be for second. Yeah, even Van Aert needed to settle for second place relatively quickly. He was pretty early on in the race, not that good. Well, at least not as aggressive as we saw last year. Last year, he would have been able to take advantage of that he wouldn't have waited in the interview post race he said i took it a bit easier than a mole i felt like i hit a wall there trying to follow him which tells me enough he knows that at this moment he can't really compete with van der poel and it also makes sense because he's not doing worlds why would he be in like good form he's just racing for fun for the money that's all valid reasons he seems to be enjoying himself and second is definitely not bad at all so there's a lot of talking going on in the Belgian media. Like if I open the Belgian papers, biggest two papers, at last news and at Newsblad, on at Newsblad, what do we see? Even a beast like Van Aert can't come close to Van der Poel. Is the dominance of Van der Poel not killing cyclocross? Why this is the best match of Van der Poel ever? And then they refer to his house that he has in Spain now so he can do more endurance in the sun. If I open at last news, that is the biggest paper of Belgium same type of headlines like van aert van der poel is described by his rivals not by van aert but by easy beat is like if you're behind a motor like the, the the level that he has is so so high and there's a lot of talking going on and like there's always talks about what does this mean for the classics i don't really want to speculate about that because 
I think it's irrelevant. Yes, there's a lot of talking going on, but with the way that Van der Poel's preparation is moved to Spain is being hyped, like is um, it's insane to me that in the post-race interview in Esse they ask Wout van Aert, are you going to move to Spain? There's literally a column of somebody who is saying Van Aert should move to Spain. This is the moment. His children are like in the ages that they can learn languages, they can learn Spanish. Like, what is going on? It's winter. This doesn't have to mean anything for the cross or for the spring classic season. It's cross season. Like, maybe Van der Poel like absolutely dominates the spring classics, but I'm 100% sure that at Jumbo they know what they're doing with Van Aert and that Van Aert will be good in the cross season because it's not like they're worried that Van der Poel is going to blast everybody away. They're worried that Van Aert is going to be like seventh in the Tour of Flanders. Yeah, I, I think it, it, it's it's a bit, you know, from one side, obviously it is that we haven't seen Van Aert in, in such a shape uh, going into the cross season in a way. And I think that preparation is definitely something that, you know, goes a bit against what he normally does normally is very competitive in a cyclocross season and yeah for sure there were years that that van der poel was that, that that bit better but there was always the chance at the worlds where he was sometimes able to to turn the tables and and and, and, and make sure that he wins it and that is definitely now something that's not in the books because he's not going to race the worlds and he definitely doesn't have that ambition and you know it looks at the moment like someone that is in a very good shape, but definitely has didn't do any preparation for cross racing. In, in and you know the Belgian media is, is maybe a little bit panicking because one of their biggest rider, or maybe the biggest rider in, in definitely for the classics, still hasn't won Tour of Flanders. Still has to search for 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 a Paris Roubaix, and th- those are things that that maybe play a role in the exaggeration of of what the measurement should be for Van Aert to, to win that. And I think that at the moment it reaches almost a point of delusion and, you know, the, the media also need the clicks, they need uh, the hype, and which in a way is normal, but it can also reach a certain point of, of madness. And I think the Belgian media is at certain points reaching that. But but yeah, I think that for, for Van Aert there is definitely no reason for, for panic. I think that he was very honest from the start that this doesn't have his priority and that he was going to try and uh, make the best out of it and and we see just that and I don't think that we have to be that surprised of what he is doing at the moment and let's see how it will play out on the road I mean that's it's um, it's definitely going to be interesting and something um, I'm looking forward to to see how he can cope with this preparation and how that will result in in, in the results and on the road it's doing something different also with doing the Giro and Vuelta rather than the Tour aiming to win stages in all three of the Grand Tours during his career. I just think, and it's normal because it happens in every country with everything, like when Van der Poel was having his back issues, the Dutch media was like panicking and there were talks, oh, maybe you should leave Alpecin or you should drop cyclocross and mountain bike or like... It's natural, it happens, but I think like at this moment it's definitely overblown and I don't really want to go that far and like say that Van Aert should also move to Spain to reach this level because the level of Van Aert is not bad. He just didn't have it yesterday. Van der Poel at the moment is much better. I don't know if this is the best cyclocross match over Van der Poel we have ever seen. He looks very, very good, but we've seen a very, very good match over Van der Poel before like his 2019 2020 season when he started in october no in november he started in uh, early november in rudderford from the top of my head like he won all but one race he only lost in ronse the season before was another crazy season like that where he won like all but two races i've said it before this is one of the greatest soccer cross riders ever we're watching a master at work we're watching an artist perform and we should enjoy that. It was just another special ride. The ease with which he was overtaking, like on the beach, we didn't really see everything because the TV directors were a bit messy from time to time. But yeah, it was it was very very strong by him. We should, I think, look at the entire top ten and then talk about the normal people in this race. Van der Poel with the win ahead of Van Aert. Third place was for Isabit ahead of Zweig, Nieuwenhuis, Van der Haar, Van der Putte, Pitcock, Nice, and Van der Bos. We have to talk about, I just call them the normal people, so I'll stick with that. The normal people's winner, Elizabeth calls him himself that from time to time as well. 
I think Izbit can be satisfied with a third place. These dry conditions, his form looks to be good. But yeah, just everything came together for him after that training camp in Spain. I will stick with what I said before. I worry about the consistency of his results in this busy period. He's racing pretty much everything, like four races in five days between the 26th and New Year. I'll stick with that, but his form at the moment looks good. And yeah, it was a solid composed ride by him today or yesterday. <laughs> We should underestimate his results in, in Antwerp because I think that we are in December now and we still see an Izerbeet that is very competitive and I think that that alone is something that is that is great to see and he has grown in his role in a way and he understands now a little bit more uh, how to um, go over over the course of a whole season and be good for, for an entirety of a season and I think it shows in the results so far and Sure, there will be races in 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 the, in the next coming uh, week where he will struggle a little bit and he will not be as consistent because of the amount of races that that will that will come. It will accumulate in a way, but I think that looking at how he has been coping with the races so far, he will try to do exactly what he has been doing so far, and um, the form is there. So I think that always helps with. Um, making sure that you have great results. A podium is definitely something that he has to aim for. And yeah, I think that for now it, it looks very good and I hope that he can keep that up because um, it will help uh, definitely if you have someone that that is leading the classifications, also very competitive if the big three, but now you can maybe say big one, uh, arise uh, to the field and he's still able to kind of stay, stay within some sort of a distance that is, you know, some you know good in a way so i think that that is encouraging to see and very good uh from his side and hopefully he can maintain that over the course of the next couple of races he was just ahead of Lauren Sveik, although i never really thought Sveik would catch easy beat but Sveik, i think will be <laughs> happy that for once the course was dry and fast he's a rider that loves courses like this i think the sand effect of this course was overrated at least in the current form the sand does give you a benefit if you ride it easier because you save energy but apart from like the corners at the back it's not really like the sand skills like in Rudevorde with the sand pit you have like a benefit if you're like super good and can ride to the top Coxida that goes for like it goes without saying there with all the dunes and stuff that it helps that you're able to ride the sand but here like the beach part which was at the end of the lap like that was fairly easy and then a quick run another section was a run it was all doable i think it was more a course where it came down to how much power can you put out and how fast can you take the corners on the course rather than how well can you ride the sand despite the presence of sand there so i think it helped Sveik more that it was a dry and fast course than anything else in that regard it was good to see new house be fifth he is a versatile rider but this is not his strength and then if we look at riders who don't necessarily excel on courses like this, we have a couple of slightly disappointing results. Pitcock 8, Thibaut Nijs 9, Pim Ronhaar 11. I think that for Pitcock this isn't that disappointing. He did fairly well for somebody who crashed in the first corner. It wasn't really his fault, I would say. It was just tricky with the sand there and the rut shooting out. It can happen fairly easy there. Dibon Nijs just back after training camp, 9th, not great, not terrible. Ronhaar, 11th, definitely would have hoped for more. Although I think for all of them, it was like fairly average. So I think these riders are all riders that will hope for a better day in Gavre. That will be like telling for their level at the moment, because that's a course that suits all of them. Yeah, totally. I mean, I didn't have the highest of expectations for, for Pitcock, <laughs> to be honest, in Antwerp. I think I still think that he didn't deliver to to his to his potential but you know with his crash at the beginning of the race i think it's also if if you already had a course that doesn't suit you uh, well then it's even going to be more difficult task to to get through it and i think that that's what we saw and um, i have no doubts that in in Havre he will uh, if he doesn't have any a misfortune in the first laps um he will definitely be there for fighting for for a podium and who knows what what is possible i think for for someone like nice you know it wasn't the nicest of races to um to start again 
in a way. I think it was it was a race that kind of cuts you at the throat from from the first lap. You don't really have a lot of there's some rest left and right, but overall you have to keep pushing. It's 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 very difficult. Um, it's fast, uh, and you you have to be on your toes because those small sand sections, in a way, you don't lose a lot a lot of time, but you still lose some time, and it could sometimes lead to you know losing contact con- connection with with the rider in front of you, and then you have to get back, and that costs energy, and it's already not the slowest of races, so. It is a difficult one to start uh, to start up again, and I think that maybe this is maybe even the race that he needed to be uh, to be good again in in Havre. So I don't think there's any need for panic for for Nice, and the same goes for Ronar. We have seen it already this season that he can sometimes have not the greatest of races and then bounce back a week later, or you know, let's see if he can do that in Havre. So it will be interesting to see what is going to happen because I think Havre is definitely not comparable in any way with uh, what we saw in Antwerp. It should also be said that Tom Pitcock was sick and hardly was able to do any training in the week before Antwerp and that, that also influenced his race. I've noticed I've been switching between Antwerp, the English pronunciation, and Antwerpen, the Dutch one, but they both obviously mean the same. Outside of the top 10, a couple of interesting finds, Kuhn and Ruek, 14th and 15th, Decent results, but they were ahead of Van Tuchenhout, who had a broken seat post and needed to run a bit. No luck for him. It's not really his season, apart from that European title that he got. German Kuipers, not really added in this half of the season anymore in 17th. I'm sure he had hoped for more Timmerlier first cross race of the season in 21st. Actually surprised he got selected rather than somebody like Quinton Hermans. Mace Hendricks continues to struggle this season with a 26th place and Ryan Kamp DNF'd after I think what was a crash. Then we go on to the women's race. A very brief summary of that is that in the first part of the race Lucinda Brandt and Femme van Empel were leading. Puck Pietersen was chasing and chased for a long while for some 20 minutes. Once she closed the gap to the leaders van Empel and Brandt that was the sign for van Empel to attack. Pietersen immediately dropped Brandt followed soon after and Van Empel went on to take 11 wins out of 11 races. Is Van Empel again the strongest? She seems, despite the increasing opposition, to still be in relative control with a 100% win streak. Do you think that Van Empel is going to win every single cross race she does this season? I think so. I think that if nothing crazy happens... For sure, we have seen a Brandt that is very strong, but I don't think there is that extra that Brandt can can generate uh, and then uh, form a threat for 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 Van Empel. So I think that it is mainly it mainly has to do with how uh, Van Empel will be in the next coming races. But if I if I look at also at Antwerp again, it was just a confirmation of what we have seen so far this season. It kind of softens the blow in a way what you have seen in Inherentals for, for Brand to be so close and if it wasn't for the mistake it could have been a loss and I think that I doubt that we will see Brand in a similar position to Herentals in my opinion I think that it is that difference is there but you know Brand is someone that that never gives up and we saw it again in Antwerp it was you know Van Empel was in the lead and Brand definitely could have I wouldn't say take it a little easier because he had Petrus behind but she was still giving, you know, it, it almost looked like she was still uh, believing in in a victory. And uh, there are a lot of riders that, that are not able to, to do that. So I think, you know, heads off for sure. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see if, if how, how that will play out in, in the rest of the season. And encouraging signs from, from Peters, uh, it has to be said that it, it looks again a lot better. And if you look at how that progression has been going so far, Maybe Petersen can be can form a bigger threat for Van Empel than Brandt, uh, and maybe we have to look at at Petersen more than at Brandt for uh, for defeat of Van Empel. So it will be interesting. I you know I'm looking forward to what what can happen because it seems like um, every race where Van der Poel will start is going to be a difficult one to watch in a way. <laughs> and um, at the women's side, it's 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 getting more and more exciting. So let's see and hope that that it will. Uh, that it will stay that way. Van Empel could very well be on for a 100% win streak season, especially because she's 
super picky in the number of races she does. If you reduce the number of races you do, you obviously also reduce the chance of something going wrong. It, it should be impressive and I don't know how much I think that the opposition is going to come from Peterse. I agree that this is not a good course for Peterse. It's too fast. The sand, despite not being decisive, is something she struggles with. The running sections is something I would also give Van Empel the benefit in. It's a good course for her. I think Brandt, considering the fact that it was her second race, in the same amount of days did a good job she put up the best fight she could she's improving i may be just more hoping than anything that we're gonna get like battles against van empel but yeah i don't really see a significant fight being pulled up so far i think the edge the the performance difference that van empel has over the rest is just significant at the moment like we hope to see her face off against alvarado who we saw like put in great performance after great performance in like toa and in all these socials are right in amur she won and then yesterday in antwerp it just didn't really come together for her so yeah, I don't know what's up with Alvarado. She didn't really have an explanation, which is okay. It's the first time first time this season she's off the podium. Maybe just a bad day. That's possible. I hope she can rebound and rebounds, come back. It's going to be interesting to see who does which race. In Havre, they're going to be there. Havre is, depending on the conditions, maybe somewhere where you can see somebody challenge for example but as long as like her climbing skills are that much higher and like her technical skills are always improving she was jumping the barriers again that's something she did last year and she's refound her confidence to do it it just all looks so good i'm not saying nobody will ever reach that level of an ample because i'm convinced peterson can reach it i'm just not entirely convinced that the best brand and the best alvarado can reach van ample although maybe if an ample has a bad day I, I'm probably just hoping out here, but yeah, it was a dominant, dominant display. Although I do want to give credit to Peterson and Brandt. I think they deserve it. Both fought with all they had. Peterson paid the price for not having the greatest start. I think she could have been closer. I don't think her result would have changed if she had been on the wheel right away. But both did what they could, didn't they, Issa? Yeah, they, they, they both uh, tried and they both kind of filled in that mission and there is not much that you can do. And yeah, you know, there were not that many mistakes that Van Empel was making and then it's going to be very difficult to beat. And, you know, for Peters, uh, she struggled a little bit at the beginning of the race, I would say. And then when she finally got in a very good rhythm, had to fight very hard to, to get back. And, you know, that is... Um, that is a difficult uh, situation for a rider to 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 be in, and you know the moments that Van Empel and and Brandt were uh, dropping the pace a little bit. Peterson got closer and closer, but yeah, it was then you know obviously all that energy that you put in in the in uh, trying to chase is 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 going to cost you in the end. And I think that is eventually what we saw. And you know both Brandt and Peterson uh, gave it their all, tried it, and, and didn't succeed. And you know, we have said it already. I think that it is um, the next couple of races are going to be difficult uh, for the others to to beat Van Empel. But um, who knows? There is always a chance when you start, and uh, we have seen it already at the men's side that you know certain circumstances can uh, you know can can throw in some some difficult uh, circumstances for 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 the competitors. And you know, who knows then what can happen and. I think that if you look at the form of Brandt, it is very good. And if you look at Peterson, it's in a very upwards trajectory. So I think, you know, we should look at it positively. But realistically, I think that it is going to be very difficult. We remain optimistic for <laughs> some exciting races. It's not that I don't 
that I want to see Van Empel do. They're just optimistic, like in terms of let's get about. Let's look at the entire top ten behind the Dutch top four, which we discussed. Van Empel, Brand, Pietersen, Alvarado. We find Laura Verdonschot in fifth, ahead of Sirin van Anrooy. Inger van der Heide was seventh, ahead of Marie Schreiber, Leonie Bentveld, and Zoe Backset. The top three U23s rounding out the top ten. Although, I must say, Shirin van Anrooy is still racing with a U23 bib number. She is still eligible to race U23 Worlds this year. She can make that decision if she feels like she can't medal the elite race. I mean, not going to speculate about that. Just saying it's a possibility. From the riders here, I don't really have all too much to discuss. Van Anrooy, we discussed that in more, and previously it's just not smooth enough at the moment we'll see how that improves but it doesn't seem to be as good as last year for Donschot sand specialist fifth is very good for her Van der Heide can be modestly satisfied with that seventh place it's a decent performance she's a rider that likes courses like this and it's just all right Schreiber Bentveld where we've seen them and Baxet in 10th is maybe slightly disappointing but I'm gonna stick with the same statement as for Pitcock we'll see how she does in Gavre because that's a better course for her. These sand courses are not her type of thing. Outside of the top 10, Van Alva continues to struggle with a 20th place. Betsema, same for her in 14th. Vash in 16th. Vash and Betsema both having injuries influencing their season and just a lack of decision made in King. And for the rest, I don't really think. There is too much to talk about, unless, Isam, you have anything burning you need to share to our audience. Well, yes, because um, I, I think that Van Anroy, I don't know what interview it was, but I I remember that there was an interview where she pointed out that uh, she will not be competing for the Under-23 uh, Worlds and that she will change that, um, you know, that she will she already has, was in talks with, with UCI, so she, they will change that as well. And she will be coming out uh, in the elites category. So uh, if there was any doubt, she has said it herself. So I don't think she can back out of that. And it seems pretty serious. So I think that it will be uh, uh, the elites category for uh, Shirin van Arroy. Well, I think that would be the right decision. And I mean, if she's talking to the UCI to have that number changed now because she doesn't want to be on the U23 podium, I would take it pretty serious. If she just said it, then I would have only I would have said I will I will see I will believe it when I see it. But yeah, if you tell it that way, I think that is a done deal. Good for sharing that because I missed that. I was there. I said earlier it was a pretty good day out. I was filming in the morning for the American Junior team working on that right now to get a nice video out it was a nice day and that section alongside the beach they didn't create it that way the water levels of the schel that have been high this year was just swallowed like a whole part of the shore like the beach which meant you could drop down to the shore always nice shots remind me of worlds in ostend that's like ostend oh those pictures there that's like the best thing ever those pictures are so so good i I love it. I hope it doesn't get overused, but like here occasionally, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Isam, thank you for being here. Yes, thank you for having me. The marathon continues. We will be back with a podcast of the World Cup in Gavre. That race is taking place on Boxing Day, and then our marathon starts five races, five days, five podcasts in five days. And then New Year's Day, this is going to be mayhem. Isam, once again, really appreciate your time. For being here we will be back i'm gonna rest up some and load up for that christmas dinner tomorrow thanks everyone for listening merry christmas and goodbye